What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome back to another installment in my Universal Classic Monster Reviews. And today's video I'm taking a look at the original sequel to the classic horror film The Mummy. The review is of 1940's The Mummy's Hand. Mummy's Hand was released in 1940, the original sequel to The Mummy. This sequel was directed by Christy Caban. And in The Mummy's Hand, an expedition of American archaeologists searches for the undiscovered tomb of Princess Anaka and finds that it is guarded by the living mummy, Taurus. So yeah, if you, if you saw my review of the original 1932 Mummy, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I respect it on a technical level. I love the atmospheric approach of that. Of course, Karloff is great in the title role, but I don't find it near as engaging as some of the best Universal monster films. And if I gotta be honest, I actually prefer the 1999 version with Brendan Fraser, which is probably an unpopular opinion to some Die Hard fans. So, my reaction to the sequel, The Mummy's Hand, uh, I'm honestly not too crazy about it. I honestly think the one, first off, the original is better by a long shot, mainly due to it before having Boris Karloff in the lead role. I know Boris Karloff hated being in that mummy makeup and he refused to be involved in any of the mummy sequels, but Boris Karloff was the face of the mummy and you're telling me you couldn't get him back, even with a large sum of money. Yeah, if you couldn't have gotten Boris Karloff, you probably should have just scrapped it all together because this mummy is pathetic compared to Boris Karloff. Sure, he's in the makeup more than Boris Karloff only had in two scenes, but whoever played him, I think his name is Tom Tyler, he doesn't even look scary. And that's a big problem with the film, like he doesn't look creepy enough to fill in the shoes of Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff was so creepy in the role, and a lot of that being some of the interesting camera angles and everything. And this one is a lot more blandly directed in comparison. That's why it was hard for me to get invested in this movie. That's one reason. Two. I don't care for any of the characters. I just find these characters very bland, cardboard characters. And yeah, I know that the formula of these mummy movies are these characters going on the expeditions and getting into some stuff that they shouldn't get involved in. That was a trope in the original classic. It was a trope in the 99 film. It was a trope in the Tom Cruise version. And it's the case here, but this is a movie where I didn't care for any of the characters. I thought the characters were bland. I thought they were blandly acted and I didn't really get invested in any of them. Like they just seem like copy and paste characters and that's another problem I have with the film as well is the movie kind of copies the 1932 mummy and doesn't have any of the substance that the 1932 one had. And it's weird because the 99 borrowed from this, but the 99 was more memorable because of the crew they had behind the camera and the cast and just the overall direction. Here, like half the movie is like exposition of characters and their dialogue and their situations getting to the tomb. And that's like half the movie. And this is only a 67 minute film, so just barely over an hour. The mummy doesn't show up till about 45 minutes into the film and by then the movie just kind of just I was just kind of zoned out by then and even the showdown like with the original mummy is very anticlimactic and it's pretty laughably bad if I've got to be honest how they take the mummy out probably worse here than in 32 character that probably annoyed me the most is the female character at I find it so frustrating. She's set up to be an interesting character. She seems like somebody where that you don't want to mess with. Like she thinks that her dad who gets caught in the exposition is being robbed 
And so she works in standing her ground and then realizing he's not being robbed. But she's proved that she's capable of a gun. And then when she sees the mummy, she starts screaming and acting all annoying and the damsel in distress type, like how most women were in that time and then becomes, gets captured and becomes a sacrifice. At least Rachel Weiss in 1999 had a spunky personality and held her own. I love Rachel Weiss in 99, but obviously different era. Things have changed since then, and it's something of the time, but I just found that very annoying. The movie has okay cinematography, but it just doesn't have the same atmosphere to it that the 32 film had. And also the priest character who's in charge of the mummy. Even though he may be the best actor, his character makes no sense. Like, he's entrusted to keep the secret of the Tomb of the Mummy. And yet, when these explorers want to go in, despite him trying his hardest to talk them out of going into it by any means necessary, at the last minute, he tricks a scientist into bringing the mummy back to life and wants to kill them all off like that was weirdly out of character and it didn't really make any sense and that was it was really hard getting into this movie it really was I mean Universal was trying I guess with the sets and the makeup and stuff but this just doesn't have the same charm that 32 had and watching the mummy's hand makes me appreciate the 32 mummy a little more Sure, the 32 Mummy had pacing issues, and I did have some narrative issues, and things like that. And I don't find it near as memorable as the 99 film or any of the other classic Universal Monster films, but at least that one had passion put into it. The Mummy's hand just did not. It felt like a cash grab. It didn't feel like a sequel, it felt like a blander remake of the 32 film. This movie shouldn't have been made since they couldn't get Boris Karloff. Because Boris Karloff was the horror icon. and I, I can't imagine any other actor from that time really nailing the role of the mummy as well as Boris Karloff. And I think they dropped the ball on this film. I don't think it's a horrible movie, there's watchable elements to it. But it's just a blander copy of the original Mummy, and it's definitely not something I'd recommend to diehard fans unless you're a completist. I'm gonna give The Mummy's Hand a two and a half out of five stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 42 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of The Mummy's Hand, the part of my series of Universal Classic Monster Films. If you're new to the series, I did buy the complete collection of the Universal Classic Monster franchise. There's 30 of them, and it has a lot of the original movies and their sequels, like the Dracula films, the Wolfman movies, the Mummy films, Frankenstein films, The Invisible Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon. It also has the Phantom of the Opera, and has their crossover film, including the ones with Abbott and Costello. A lot of these movies, especially the sequels and crossovers, are first time viewings for me, so it is exciting going through all these series. And I've, I've enjoyed it so far, even though there's some movies I don't care for as much, but it's still, an, it's still a really cool little franchise. And this was like the first big movie franchise, I think, in Hollywood history. So it's fun looking back and seeing these old films and seeing how they helped shape the horror landscape that we know today. So far in this series, I've tackled Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, Bride of Frankenstein, Werewolf of London, Dracula's Daughter, Son of Frankenstein, The Invisible Man Returns, and in this video, The Mummy's Hand. Join me in the next installment of this series where I'll be taking a look at another Invisible Man sequel, and that is The Invisible Woman, also from 1940. I'll leave a link in the description below for my past reviews in this series. And if you're a fan of this franchise, click the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future classic monster videos. So if you've seen The Mummy's Hand, let me know down in the comments below what you follow the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. 
this is your first video besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!